Hey guys, it's Mario from WATL, and today I had the pleasure of interviewing the always happy Dr. Dan Ceballos. For those at home who don't know who Dr. Dan is, keep an eye out for him because you may see him on TV soon. He was one match away from appearing in the World Axe Throwing 2020 World Championship. His only loss, and the loss that prevented him from being on TV, was actually to the 2019 world champion, Sam Carter. Probably before I, I start to set up, I, I really like to kind of focus on trying to be as relaxed as possible. Uh, you know, not really thinking about my score, not really thinking about anything else other than the throw at hand. Me personally, and I don't know where people stare at, you know, obviously we're, we're looking at one and a half inch bullseye. I like to stare at the upper corner edge of it because most most blades and most axes have a lot more coverage on the bottom half like with the beards and so so if I know if I want to miss I'd rather miss a little high because I have a little bit more room for error high than I do if I miss low so if I miss low there's not as much uh, above the axis as, as below the axe so so when I start staring it down I'm kind of staring really on the upper half of the uh, the bullseye kill shot i know that most throwers are right foot forward in terms of their stance however uh i'm in the the very famous left foot forward club my feet are about shoulder width apart but i stagger with my left foot forward i just feel like i'm more stable throwing with my left foot forward i've tried right foot forward this does not work for me my hips my shoulders are all square to the target so when i look at the foul line I try to make sure that my feet are, are parallel to the foul line, my hips are parallel, and my shoulders. So I'll, I'll take a quick look down and just to make sure that all of that is straight. He actually aims by picking a spot on his forearm. So when he aims, he talks about where specifically he's going to be aiming for the target on his forearm. And because there can be slight variances either on the floor or in different venues with boards varying just slightly, even half an inch can make a difference for a thrower. Dr. Dan's able to pick up on that and he's able to readjust exactly where he's going to be aiming. And then I bring up my axe. I, I have my elbow almost at the level of my armpit is about a good height for me. My arm height will kind of depend on every lane because every lane's a little bit different some lanes are a little bit you know longer than 12 or a little bit closer to 12. you know i, I will i will vary my arm height depending on how my axis is landing and how i want to throw as long as the middle of my blade is is hitting the upper part of the of the bullseye that's kind of what i'm trying to do and i try to find that spot when i line up and, I, and when i line up to the target my right eye is pretty much splitting the bullseye so basically my forearm I kind of pick a spot on my forearm, either halfway through my forearm, the bottom half of my forearm, the upper part of my forearm. I kind of like look it up. And so I'm looking at the bullseye with my left eye, but I'm kind of aiming it to my right eye. And then that's what I use to, as, my, as my guide for aiming. And I know everyone aims a little bit differently. Dr. Dan brings up a good point. And one of his points is when you do the pinch grip and it's true, it puts a lot of pressure on that first knuckle. But when it comes to grip though, the one thing I would mention though, whether someone's a pinch or a hammer gripper, yep. I think everybody should really know their pressure point. Are they pushing off the webbing of their hand? Or are they pushing off the knuckle? From my understanding, most pinch grippers are kind of around this a bottom knuckle where you know my pressure point is probably a little bit closer to the webbing. So I have to make sure that if I mess up and right, that I know that there's something that I'm either not yeah. pushing correct with my pressure point or my wrist might be turning. So, so that's something when I start seeing my axe very, very left and right, I know that there's something in my either wrist or my pressure point that's a little off. Part of what he does to get into the moment and the momentum of wanting to throw and compete is he actually uses essential oil and he rubs it on his wrist. So before he goes into a match, he takes a smell of the essential oil and that gets him into the headspace of I'm competing now. This sport is really 90% mental and about 10% physical, maybe 5% physical, uh, whether it's golf or, or any other sort of skilled sport where it's really, you know, the, the six inches between your ears is the most important real estate on the axe throwing lane. For me, I really understand the, the neurology when it comes to smell. The nerve that is responsible for smelling, it's the one of the senses, it's the only sense in the body it goes directly into the brain and it goes into this system called the limbic system, which is basically the system that's responsible for memory. Right. So for me, uh, what I like to do or something that I do is I, I anchor myself when I practice and when I get into tournaments with a smell. And so, so I have some uh, essential oils that I put on my wrist and I do it right before every practice yeah. and then I do it right before every uh, match. And so when I smell that smell, 
I know that it's time to throw axes and it's time to get focused and it tends to kind of calm my nerves down because, you know, whether I'm throwing on my driveway uh, practicing or just uh, weekly league night or for the world championship of axe throwing, it's the same scent. It's the same essential oil. I actually still have the same bottle that I use at World. The scent of smell is very much uh, locked into your memory. So I try to anchor myself before my match. Again, when he's in the lane, it's all business. He's fully focused, fully concentrated. Every time I get ready to throw, I will do a big exhale, like, you know, just to kind of relax my body. But I also, when I throw my ax, I also breathe out too. So more like martial arts. You know, if you throw, if you throw a punch, uh, you you want to breathe out because your abs are tight, and so so that's also kind of helped me anchor myself while I'm actually throwing. Most people know me like when I'm outside the lanes, I'm like the friendliest guy. I talk to everybody. I am I am a social butterfly. Yeah. But when I get in the lane though, I get like like I yeah. like I switch. You know, some people are the same when they get you know when they get into the lanes, and then some people like me like when I get in there it's time to take care of business I very rarely even look at my opponents when I throw because that's not who I'm throwing against I'm throwing against myself I'm I'm throwing against that bullseye that I'm staring at now Dr. Dan is what we call one of the children of Quaddle the quarantine axe throwing league when everything shut down and people were building targets at home and completing globally under the WATL technology platform so I would say that I'm a child of the, the Quaddle generation. There's a few of us that came out of Quaddle that, yeah. you know, nobody knew who we were before Quaddle. We come out of Quaddle and then now we're crushing it at the tournament. Quaddle happened right after the Arnold and, you know, the Arnold 2020 was my very first pro tournament, which came off right after I got back from Waterloo, by the way. So you knew how I was back, you know how I was back. Yeah, yeah. So when, when Quaddle happened and the Quarantine League, that was definitely my peak time. That was like five days a week. Mm. Probably, I would say two to three hours a day sometimes, depending on the amount of matches. I mean, and I really felt like I needed a personal assistant just to keep track of all the matches that I was throwing <laughs> during yeah. Quaddle time because I would, I mean, it got to the point where I didn't know if it was Big X or Hatchet or I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I think I might have thrown a, I think I might have thrown a sandbag or a, a golf ball at the target because, you know, it was just so many matches. Currently, he's religious about practicing. He practices twice a week on top of the two leagues each week that he does. My practice schedule hasn't really changed that much since things have opened up. In a sense of I do two leagues a week and then I have two practice sessions a week and I am very, very religious about it. My two practices a week, I focus on things that I, I didn't do well the week before or nice. so whether it was a kill shot or whether it was following up a miss with a, with a bullseye, you know, because that's something that I keep track of because uh, everyone's going to throw a five or a four or a miss but can you follow it up the next throw and not do it again it's okay to make mistakes because everybody makes mistakes just don't do it again and uh and so so i really really hunker down when i throw a five or if i throw a four or i miss a bull or, or miss a kill to not do it the second time you know so i will work on things like that so my practice sessions that are not league two to two and a half hours uh, a week uh, of practice so what i always do is i do 30 minutes of warm-up I do about a 30 to maybe 45 minutes putzing around, tinkering, you know, maybe trying, you know, my stances a little bit closer, a little bit wider, my, my, my left foot a little bit more front, a little bit backwards, you know, little things like that, holding it higher, holding it lower, stronger grip, looser grip, you know, a lot of things just to, to try to play around for about 30 to 45 minutes. Then the last like 30 to 45 minutes, I go back to my normal throw, you know, recenter, just make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing and hitting what I want to hit and then I'm done practicing. And I usually go into a practice session trying to, uh, you know, work on something. So whether uh, sometimes I'll open Ryan Smith's book yes. and I'll read a paragraph or two. Ryan, Ryan, if you ever watching this, thank you so much for writing that book. <laughs> sometimes uh, I'll go through and think of other throwers, like what does Mike Philibon do when he when this happens, or what does Theodore do? And, and so I'll, I'll put myself in like little scenarios where I'll try to like mimic what they did. Axe throwing's fun. Make sure you don't get upset or you identify solely your, your whole personality or your whole being around axe throwing. Go out there, have fun, compete, learn and iterate. It's easy to get caught up in like the scores and the rankings and the, where did I place and how did I do. Axe throwers, and I'm sure in other 
profession as it is, they put a lot of pressure on themselves. And I, and I feel like when their identity is tied into our ax throwing or their identity is tied into a score or their identity is tied into a result, I think that's something, it's a cautionary tale because I think it can really, from the mental aspect, uh, cause people to go down a road that I hope people don't go down. That's probably the one thing that I've seen within the community that, that worries me a little bit, I'm a chiropractor, you know, I'm, I'm Dr. Dan, you know, it's, it's yeah. here on my strokes. I know who I am and I know the kind of person I am and I, I love to compete and, and I love to compete against the best of the best. And, and I, of course I want to do well, just like everybody else does. But I don't put my identity into axe throwing. This is an experience. And you know, what experience am I going to get out of this tournament? Do it for the fun. Do it to be the best axe thrower that you can be but not be tied in so much onto the results of what, what axe throwing could be. Because like you said, a kill shot one way or the other, uh, a bullseye or a four one way or the other, the, the bracket completely flips and completely changes. And there's 10 different people on ESPN this time. It's like, you know, if a butterfly flaps its wings in Japan, you know, well, Dan hit his kill shot on throw 10. I don't know. We don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching today. If you haven't already, subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, Hit the like button on Instagram, share our videos, keep updated, stay tuned with the latest news, updates, interviews, and special offers, including new products. Thanks a lot, everyone. 